Hello, welcome to this episode of the Martial Truth Podcast. Speed, okay? Speed. So, one of the uh, subscribers to the channel sent me a message saying, Hey, Sensei, can you please do a podcast on speed and talk about speed and how to develop speed? So, I thought it was a good idea, but this podcast is going to be a little bit different. So, normally I'm sitting in this chair and waxing poetic as I'm speaking to you guys. But today, I'm going to cut to me actually demonstrating some things and demonstrating some stuff on how I maintain my speed and how I acquired my speed. So first off, what you want to understand is we have two types of muscle fiber in the body. We have fast twitch and slow twitch. So the easiest way to think about it is a sprinter is fast twitch. That's why they look like linebackers. And a marathon runner is slow twitch. Okay, and that's why they look very skinny, all right? They don't look very powerful at all. Their bodies are not powerful. They're, they're designed for long distance running, okay? So two different, very different things. So what do we want in martial arts? Well, we don't want either. We, we don't want the only sprinter and we don't want the only marathon body. We want a melding of the two. So we want to have the same type of bodies the same type of idea as a boxer, as a modern boxer. So years ago, when I first um, started following boxing, which don't really follow it as much anymore, it's just not as enjoyable with all the different champions and everything. Um, championship fight was 15 rounds. And they used to say the last three rounds were the championship rounds. So why would they say that? Well, you take two very high level fighters whose skill is close to being equal. They're both phenomenal, okay? Now they're in a ring. Well, what's gonna decide the outcome if neither one can really land that punch that hurts the other guy? Well, it's the conditioning. So when you get into those last three rounds, that's when it shows who's the superior conditioned fighter. So, our type of fighting, my type of fighting, I'm not going 15 rounds. My opponent's attacking me, okay, and I'm dealing with him. And hopefully the fight is open over within 15 seconds, okay? That's my goal. I want it to be like this, and I want it over. But sometimes what happens? Maybe the criminal that's attacking you is just incredibly tough. I mean, he's physically tough. Maybe he's incredibly strong. So now in my case, I was always looking to handcuff and control my adversary, right? So that kind of puts a restriction on me, right? Yeah, I could beat him half to death to get him handcuffed, but in general, um, police departments don't want you to do that, all right? Now, sometimes you have to. You don't have a choice. It's you or him. So sometimes the, the combat I would be in would go longer, all right? It would go longer. And unless you've been in an actual real life and death situation, you can't imagine how fast you get tired. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm in really good shape, and I was in really good shape as a cop, right? Keep in mind, I'm wearing 20, 30 pounds of gear. I got the restriction on me, the bulletproof vest, all right? Um, so, you know, you'd start fighting, you can't get the guy under control. Now the fight goes 30 seconds, maybe it's a minute. Now you're really sucking wind. This is just the nature. It's because of everything that's going on with your body. All right. Which again, I've talked about in other podcasts. I'll just mention here briefly, blood vessels constrict, all different stuff. Chemicals are being dumped in the body. So, so it, it makes you out of wind and get tired very quickly. So you need some of that endurance in case you have one of those situations. But we're here to talk about speed. So what we want to do is we want to be able to generate speed and still maintain power. So I see a lot of guys, their hands are very fast. They throw very fast hands. Mm, but it doesn't look like there's a lot on it, okay? So what we want to do is we want to be able to have those fast hands, but 
still you want that we want that power right we want that power behind it right so we want the proper body alignment the body mechanics but we want that speed okay so the answer is a relative simple one right if tonight i'm training in the dojo and i'm working on my techniques be it kata basics whatever i'm doing where i'm not working with a partner on tuesday night I'm, I try to get faster. And then on Thursday night, I try to get faster than Tuesday night. But now what I have to do is I have to go over to a heavy bag. Right? Now, can I hit the heavy bag multiple punch combinations, but that heavy bag's jumping off my fist every time I hit it? That means you're driving in. Okay? And then, you know, you can work it also where you work it um, with a partner but you just have to be careful as you're going, as you're trying to increase your speed, you also have to increase your focus so you don't accidentally hit your partner, okay? Again, most people in modern times have jobs, all right? They have to go to work the next day, all right? Um, nobody wants to get teeth knocked out, broken nose, okay? Broken cheekbone, eye socket, all right? So watch your focus. You can work on your speed. So maybe a better idea to initially work to the body. See how quick you can double up, all right? Um, the second half of this podcast, I'll show you some of the speed training I do, give you some ideas to work on. Um, you know, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, one time I was young, I wasn't a police officer yet, teenager, um, had a very big guy square off with me to fight me. And he reared back like this. He reared back like this. And as he reared back with his fist, I moved around his outside and I punched him four times with my right hand before his fist even came back forward. So four times I hit him. And, you know, whap, boom, 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 four times. And then I moved in and finished him. So speed is important in combat, all right? Doesn't matter if it's weapons or empty hand. But empty hand is very important and seen as most of us are going to be fighting using our hands, okay? So the idea of that, that quick, that quick one-two, right? That quick one-two, right? Where the hands can move very quick, that's what you want to work on, all right? So the other thing is you want to work on being able to do it when you're moving. Karate guys, modern karate and modern martial arts in general, the footwork's terrible. Yeah, when we practice kata, we're in these stances. But when we're working on fighting, we got to move. Your feet have to be faster than your hands. One of the first time Master Chen Zhanghua came into my um, dojo all those years ago, he said to me, he says, you know, Michael, the problem is modern martial artists, their feet are so slow. And they don't realize their feet have to be faster than the hands. So the footwork's vitally important. And your feet have to move quick. And you have to be able to move in and move to the outside, okay? You got to be able to dodge, all right? And you got to be able to generate that speed and power when you're moving. Not when you're just in this fixed position, this fixed stance, okay? Real fighting's not like that. You're not going to be in the fixed stance. So you've got to work on moving and letting the hands fly as you move. And again, everything comes into play, the waist, the hip, the shoulders, everything you need to do to generate power and speed you want to work on, okay? So the idea is to go from point A to point B as quickly as possible, but so also to generate power when you do it. So if you just have, if you're just very fast, okay, that's fantastic. But if you're very fast and you hit the guy and he stands there and looks at you, okay, all right? The other thing is, is to be fast where you're not just using your arms. That coordination of the body, the rotation of the waist, the shoulder, depending on certain types of punches. So these things become very important. All right. So without further ado, we're now going to go to me actually getting out of the chair and actually showing you and demonstrating some stuff. So this is a little bit different podcast. If you like it, let me know in the comments. And, you know, I'll do some like this more in the future. Any other ideas you have for a podcast, please let me know. All right. And again, uh, hope you enjoy the next segment. Thanks. So <clears throat> we're talking about speed and the development of speed in martial arts, um, a subject that one of my um, 
viewers sent in and asked me to address. So we're addressing this one. So again, this podcast is a little different because I'm actually going to demonstrate some stuff. All right. So this is something I did years ago that one of my instructors suggests that I do. Now, I just set this up now, so I haven't had this set up in my dojo in ages, okay? All this is is a piece of cardboard attached to a string. And this is rice rope string, so it's a little curly still. It hasn't, but it'd be better. And I usually would set it up about center of my chest. And I had one of these for years in my apartment, okay? And all I would do is stand in front of it and try to hit it with my first two knuckles, okay? So initially when I did this training, it hung and I would just like try this and I'd hit it, okay? And then you see how it bounces around, right? And then I try to hit it with the other hand, right? And eventually as it bounces around, you try to be able to no matter where it is, you hit it and it's going different places and you know, you're going to miss it because it, again, it's a weird, it's a weird action that it does, right? But you, you work where your hands fly, they fly and your hands really start to get fast and they pick out. So, so as this thing jumps around, you're able to hit it. And again, don't worry about missing it. Okay. That's going to happen. All right. But this, this will develop hand speed. Piece of cardboard some tape to tape the rope to the cardboard, tape to hold the string up there, and I just stand there and work this. You can also see it's cardiovascular, all right? So you've got to, it's involving your timing, your speed, so your hands are going to be flying, right? So your hands are going to be flying, right? And again, it jumps all kinds of cr crazy places as you're doing it, and you're going to miss it. It's okay. All right, so this training device, about 50 cents, okay? This will develop tremendous hand speed. So I'll mention also that one of the things I used when I was a white belt in the Q grades and the early Don grades is I used one of the double end striking balls, all right? And that's the same thing. And that, that you can work too. And again, you can also work this where as you're hitting, you're moving. You know, so you're moving, right? Got caught up on my light. So I can move, move around, right? So my feet aren't so, right? My feet aren't so stuck in place. I can move, 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 right? So this again helps to work your coordination, all right? Um, 50 cents, that's how much it costs. You wanna go with the double end striking ball, that's fine. Um, you know, one of the things I used to do and work with that is I'd stand in front of it and just pop, 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 and have the double end striking ball doing this, <laughs> right? And then I'd also work where I was moving around it, okay? So this will help, those will both help to develop your speed, okay? So the simplest training device in the world, okay? The cardboard's light, so it starts to bounce around and dance. And you have to let that hand fly and hit it with the first two knuckles, okay? If you want to get crazy, you could try doing it with your feet too, all right? So one, it works your focus. This thing's dancing around. Can you hit it with the first two knuckles? And then it really works your speed, okay? So give it a try. See if you like it. And let me know what you think, all right? So try this one. So let's continue with this idea of speed and how to develop speed, okay? So um, now I'm in front of a heavy bag, all right? So one of the things I see all the time is I see whether it's karate people, boxers, doesn't matter. They do these, these big wind-ups and punch, these big wind-ups and punch, okay? That's fine, but what the problem is is that's slow. So what we want to work is we, we want to work combinations. And one of the things you want to do is as an instructor, you want to listen. Why do I want to listen? So this, this is, let's do some normal stuff, right? So let's do one, two, right? So we hear one, two, okay? So that's one, two. Now what I want to do is I want to lessen the time in between the punches, but I have to maintain the power. So it's not this. That's surface hitting. There's no power, okay? 
that becomes a problem. So the key is, can you become incredibly fast with having incredible power? So these two are intertwined, all right? So a lot of people are very fast. Their hands fly, but there's no power. A lot of people are very powerful, but they lack speed. So we want both. So we want the development of those fast twitch and those slow twitch muscles working in coordination where not only are we generating tremendous speed, but we're generating power. So one of the things I do is I'll often say to the students, whether we do bag work or pad work, all right, I say, no, no, there's too much time between the punches. I want it to be bap, 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 not bap, bap, bap. So it's the same thing. We drew thrills, thrills in the air, which I do a lot of things like this. I'll do one, two, and uppercut, right? So one, two, uppercut, right? So, so that's not karate. Of course it's karate. Listen, karate guys, wake up. You got to move your feet. You got to be moving. You can't be static and stuck and stiff. You want to be loosey-goosey. You want to move. So you want that, that speed, that power, fast, okay? You know, now that I'm 60, everybody with my speed is like, ooh, when I was 59, it was like, yeah, but now I'm 60. So now they're like, sensei, how do you maintain your speed? Well, I'm telling you how I may maintain my speed. These are some of the training exercises I do, whether it's shadow boxing style things, which I'll do as a group. We'll do it as a group class, combining some of the basics and punches, but doing them where we're moving and our hands are moving fast, fast, working that speed. Okay. Those fast twitch muscles. So if I'm working a bag and I'm doing combinations, I want power, right? But I want power where, where there's not, you don't hear, okay? And you're driving into the bag, not that you're tapping it, not it surface punching it, okay? So another thing I've become a big fan of is the focus mitts, okay? So again, you see these used in boxing all the time. You'll see these used in MMA training. Okay, so because we do traditional martial arts, we're not allowed to incorporate these. Kind of silly, don't you think? So we're here, right? Person throws the punches. So a lot of times as they threw throw two punches, I'm reaching out like this, boom. So now they get a little more resistance as they hit, all right? So again, working their focus, right? So now, boom, boom, right? So now they do one, two, and then maybe an uppercut right? So one, two, and now I turn the pad down so they can, they can uppercut and they're moving and trying to generate that speed. So this is one of those things where when I'm doing this, I listen. And if it's, I'm like, no, 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 less time between punches, bop, 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 bop. right? So then you hear, that's what I want. That's what I want. And when they hit, I expect them to knock my hands back again. Not that they're just touching it. That the power has to go through the pad and knock my hand back, all right? So this is another excellent way to practice and work to develop speed, okay? You know, you can also do things like Okay, so now you're putting some weights in your hands, all right? And you work on throwing the punches. Now when you take the weights off, your hands will fly. So again, it's all about developing the fast twitch muscle fibers that generate the speed, that generate the speed. But there has to be that power behind it. If it's just tapping like no power, no good. You want that combination of speed and power, okay? So hope this helps, all right? And uh, give it a try and experiment with it. And if you have some ideas on things you do to work on speed, mention them in the comments. All right. I'd love to hear. Maybe it's something I'll add to my training. All right. So hope you enjoyed this podcast. A little bit different. Um, got up out of the chair for a good part of it to show you some things. A little tough to just talk about speed without demonstrating what I do to work on my speed. Okay. Um, again, now that I'm getting older, the question always I'm asked is, Sensei, how are you so fast? You know, my standard joke is olive oil. All right. And people kind of look and, you know, and I joke, I, no, no, I'm only joking. I say that joke because I'm, I'm Italian, right? So I, I eat a lot of olive oil. That's what makes my joints very fast. No, no, it's hard work. It's hard work and practice. Work on the speed. 
work on the power. Develop the fast twitch muscle fiber. Remember, as martial artists, we don't want too much fast twitch. We don't want too much slow twitch. So fast twitch, an example would be a sprinter in the Olympics. They're developing fast twitch. Slow twitch would be a marathon runner. You look at the body types, you see they're dramatically different. The sprinters are jacked and they look like linebackers in the NFL. The marathoners are thin, right? They look like vegetarians. No knock to my vegetarian friends, but they look very, very skinny. Their body doesn't look powerful because they're both attempting different things. One is pure endurance. One is pure explosive speed. In martial arts, in any of the combat fighting traditions, whether it be mo modern MMA, boxing, karate, jiu-jitsu, we want a merger of the two. So we want to have endurance and we want to have tremendous explosive speed and power. All right. If you like this one, please click that like, share. Please subscribe, tell your friends, spread the word about the podcast and the channel. Very close to 13,000 um, subscribers, all right? O up to 110 members. We're going to do uh, a, live, uh, a live event uh, in the very near future. So if anybody has suggestions of when a live event would be good, I'm thinking like a Saturday afternoon time frame. Um, and I'll give you plenty of notice, at least three weeks. And then we'll come on and I'll, I'll do a live um, event. Um, I'm deciding on what I'm going to do exactly. All right. Again, thanks. And I'll see you in the next podcast.